Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is James. Uh, welcome to Phoenix. Uh, today we're doing a demonstration on the Flexi Chef, which is an under pressure brat pan, and then MKN uh, Flexi Combi. We're going to be showcasing the unique of this product with uh, self-cleaning method, fully self-cleaning, and the fact that it cooks under pressure and reduces your cooking times by up to three times. All right, guys, um, well, we might get started. For, thank you for coming. My name is Jacques uh, Morin. I am the founder of uh, Phoenix. We started Phoenix 16 years ago, uh, and our um, core business, and we've always been at the forefront of innovation. So that's really what drives us. Um, you will see uh, now a demonstration on pressure cooking, but along the years, we've been the first one bringing ventilated ceiling according to the Australian standard. The first one bringing a vegetable cutting machine with um, silver that kills bacteria to keep your uh, customers safe. The first one bringing a combi oven with self-condensation wood. So always working on, on innovation. Fully electric kitchens has been a, a motto for us. Uh, so we've got references all over the country on that front. Um, today, the topic of the demonstration will be pressure cooking. So we're gonna show you and James will um, show you uh, the Flexi Chef from MKN. It's a pressurized brat pan, um, cooking three times faster than a normal brat pan, twice faster than any other pressurized brat pan on the market. And with an additional feature that is as well unique, it's self-cleaning. So a lot of chefs that are around me would appreciate that, uh, that between batches, two minutes, um, automatic cleaning and then you can go for another batch. So um, I've just uh, started off the our cooking process. So the wrap pans are all programmable for yourself so that you can put into your recipes how you like to cook your pie things. It comes with uh, automatic um, recipes that loaded into it. But um, so this one we're gonna do today is gonna be a steak and L bacon okay. pie. Um, so we're incorporating basically do the pie filling in here and then finish it with the pie crust into the, the combi oven. Um, so we're just waiting for the moment for it to heat up. Uh, processes are like it was said, like Shag was saying, it's self-cleaning, which we have this little lance, which goes into uh, this part here with a handy little spanner. I won't leave it out for too long because, yeah, it turns off as soon as you take that uh, span, uh, the knife out, for safety. And it has its housing over here. So all this means now is I've slowed down the preheating process by taking that out and now I have to talk some more. <laughs> Three sizes, so it starts at 50 liter. Uh, and you've got 50, 75, 100, and 150 liters. You can have them in team as well. So two Flexi Chef um, with one control panel in the middle. So um, still two independent units. So if ever, even an OD can have a problem. So if, if one of the unit uh, gets a problem, you will uh, the other one is, uh, is still fully operational. So from the chef point of view, uh, James will confirm with this machine, you better be quick and have your mise en place ready uh, because it doesn't let you uh, time to grease. It's all about speed and volume. Um, um, a beef stew can be done in 20 minutes. We even have a risotto cooking in four minutes. So Crown uh, Casino, their banquet kitchen, I've got three 150 liters lined up. Uh, when they do function, risotto is sometimes a, a dish in there. Uh, they can serve 1,500 portions of risotto, all that cook in, in five minutes. So what are you yeah. cooking now? We're going to do a, a beef steak and ale pie. Yes, this is the beef uh, covered it with seeds and flour. 
just so it's going to thicken itself. No, you know, we've got some um, stock cubes, um, which you'll find that the, we put the water in itself. So I'll just add the stock, the reduced stock. Um, this is what I do is a, basically it's a little umami. Basically. It's got um, all the flavors into it. So all the seasoning and everything else. So it's tomato paste, a little bit of vinegar in there, a little bit of mustard, the soy paste, because it just gives it that little bit of extra flavor rather than like a wish sauce sauce one of this. Carrots and onions and my nice streaky fatty bacon. Um, it's because the meat is very lean today, so I wanted to put a little bit more fat into that, get some flavor into there. And as you can see, we are heating up here now. It's just going to go. Getting rid of that little bit of water. So that, uh, now you can see, so that the preheating process, um, if I don't disturb it, probably lasts around about three minutes, four minutes. Long time when you're basically demonstrating something and it goes, goes slower. Just coming up to finish it now. So I will put in my oil. First part of the program here is I've got it on a 220 degrees uh, grilling thing. So that's basically to seal all that and get a nice color on the meat, seal it all in, keep everything in there, all the flavor in for the meat. Um, so we're not using it, we're not stewing it and getting all that blood and everything out of it. So I'll add that now. If anybody wants to come over, I don't know if you want to see him, please. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, please, if you want to go in front and yeah. have a look at it, anybody it doesn't bite. Go and there you go. Risk when you get further to the brat pad, get a roll. So now we've, I've clicked it over to go on to the 170 degrees. Okay, so we'll have our carrots and onions. I didn't make you. I didn't want to make you work. <laughs> yeah. So while I'll get rid of that now, yes, we might put a little bit of that umami in there. It's my favourite bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You've got to taste what you put in. Complete searing, add herbs, tomato paste, and miso. Yep. Miso, yeah. that was the word I was looking for. Yeah. So I put a little, little bit of miso in there. Yeah. It just adds that little bit of um, yeah. yeah. the stock. And have a look. Obviously, it's not exactly. Active, but yeah, we can do that. Yeah, sure. So now, yeah. automatically, water supply. I don't so, know if you can see that, guys. Um, yeah. so the, basically, the fourth step of the process was basically after we've added all of that flavor and everything in there, it adds the water into it. Closes the lid automatically. And just, just so you're aware as well, if you were still there or you had this in there, it detects it when it comes down. So now it's gone into the high speed or what we call ready express cooking, which is the under pressure. So it will preheat it um, on the bottom to the temperature. And this part here is the pressure. When all three of these, I don't know if you can see here, when all three of these steps are go, go dark, that means it's reached its pressure, and then you'll hear that rumbling sound, what we're saying, where it's built up the pressure on the top. So basically, when you were starting the, the steps, then you push your programs, and then the, the different steps are, yeah. are coming to end. The lead is going down automatically. automatically. closing. And then it's starting pressure cooking um, and we just wait for it to cook. We'll and then, so how long how long will it be cooking? Uh, uh, 26 minutes on this one here. Okay. So what, what I did, we did there as well, uh, like I had it for three minutes of um, grilling at 170 degrees after we'd had it, added the meat at a higher temperature. Um, but that part as well, if we found that basically the onions were seared to the way we wanted them and everything else. You can skip onto the bottom and go move along to the next stage when you want to manually. It's just that three minutes is this, it's not going to get spoiled if you walk away and something like that. It's going to continue um, cooking. 
So it saves that process. Yeah, yeah, during that. It doesn't change your program. Your program's still there. When it goes back and you finish it all, if you wanted to add a couple of minutes, even if you wanted to add a step in between there, if you thought that maybe it needs reducing a bit more, you can add that step in beforehand, that step, or after that step. Um, it's not saving it, it's just doing that for that particular time. Right. So you might have you might have walked away and it, you think that basically it needs a little bit more reducing or something like that, come back to it and go, for this time only I'm gonna add a, a couple more minutes onto, yeah, boiling, reduction, yeah. One, one major uh, advantage of this unit as well is you may have um, forgotten an ingredient. Uh, the other pressurized bad pan can take up to 14 minutes to depressurize and open. This one can depressurize in one minute. So you depressurize, you reopen the lid, put whatever ingredient you forgot and go back into, into pressure. So, so while that's cooking, um, I'm gonna explain that what we've done here is di different slight concept. We've put the um, uh, a, a shoulder of lamb in overnight, and this was uh, overnight cooking for 15 hours, the entire recipe. Well, uh, closer to 16 hours, actually, a few other steps. So what I'll change on here now. At the moment, it's gone through all that process of the 16 hours of cooking, and then at the end of it, we've added uh, something that's called perfect hold, which turns the oven into a hot box and will hold the product in there for whenever you come back into the kitchen. So that gap between you walking out of the kitchen is longer than 16 hours, you walk back in, it will just be holding it for you for when you eventually get there. We're holding it at 70 degrees today, this uh, lamb shoulder. Which is um, exactly what happened. So we put it yesterday, uh, yesterday afternoon in the oven and basically used the, the program, left it there. We haven't touched it, so that's gonna be yeah. the surprise. Um, hopefully, hopefully it works, yeah. it works, yeah, it works well. We'd have- we'll, we'll uh, stop it. We'd have a bit of uh, souvlaki while we're waiting for the pie mix to be ready. I'll just run through this overnight cooking. Um, so we've got it on, the first initial one is 100 degrees, just on steaming. Um, so that's just to basically put a bit of moisture into the meat so it's not drying out for when it's gonna go to that uh, thing. The second stage is basically uh, uh, for 10 minutes, 90 degrees Celsius steaming. Um, again, I think it's more, that's put in there to more penetrate. This is one of the pre-programmed ones uh, that the oven comes with the, uh, yeah, in it. Um, a lot of those overnight ones are really good as well because obviously German and meat cooking and overnight cooking is very big in their um, culture. So I wanted to basically not touch it today when I came in, do all my other things, and then this be the surprise now when I open the door. This is the first time I'm opening the door since last night. Okay, so prime plate. Okay, so we got the probe in there. Temperature. All I cooked this with, just some whole garlic, just cut in half, um, some beef stock, uh, red wine, um, some onions, carrots, and everything there, just there. So I can feel how nice and soft it is. sexy bit when you can when you can take the bone out and it's just basically completely clean you can see in the middle of this guys about how it's the meat stayed nice and pink and moist it's not that dried out brownish color that's so much moisture in there so you you hear the the flexi chef that that's that's basically the pressure valve that measures the level of pressure and then brings, opens, and close. I've got a customer who calls it the, the roaring tiger. So you will hear it along the, along the way, getting, um, getting the, the pressure, and just to measure the pressure all the time and keep it at exact the pressure you want it. You just see the way it's broken down. 
all of that fat. Apart from that little bit of gristle there and the two pieces of bone, that's pretty much 98% of the whole lamb shoulder you can use. And I'd like to invite you all up now and... Um, so, please. Try some, I just made a li little kind of bit of a, I guess an English version of a souvlaki. Oh, please go on. Well, go, you're go, all go. from Melbourne. I'm sure, sure souvlakis are very authentic down here. So I just want to make some of that. So a bit of pit bread, some yogurt. So you can see now that this step is interesting. Uh, if you go through the pipe, it's now see all three steps of lit up on the under the under pressure part, and then the two dots in the middle of the digital clock start flashing, which means now it starts basically the under pressure cooking. That part's all done. So everything's cooking now under pressure. You know when it started it, that, that flashing. That's built up with the three steps oh, yes. that gone dark. Yes. So that, that it's reached its pressure yes. in that side of there. And then it's it's going under the cooking. Yeah. Uh, again, we have all of the different types of cooking. So we've got meat, and then you can go into beef, um, grilling steaks, uh, roast beef, well done, medium rare. And again, obviously it's self-cleaning. This one, is the wave clean which is all in one chemicals and that's sealed by wax so there's no there's no um getting it onto anybody's hands anybody getting any burns or this with the chemicals everything is all in there so again it becomes a, a controllable cost because it's one capsule for clean um, and they just go onto these little handy uh shelves inserts on the bottom here, put that onto there. So this will go into the wave clean again, similar to basically the wrap, well, I'll show you on the wrap pan later. Just remove any uh, cooking containers, clean, drain, sieve. It's just basically a few checkpoints to run through it. You know, then, and then you can choose which ones you do. So there's a one minute intensive, medium or short. Obviously the intensive one, uh, which is three hours can be run at the end of the day when you're cleaning down, just left, and then come and get it in the morning. One thing you, uh, you have to remember what to do is make sure you take the plastic capsule out when you come back in the next morning if you've done an intensive. Um, a few chefs do leave them in, they are removable, but um, yeah. So, but the oven will warn you yeah. when, you've done a, when you've done a cleaning, the oven turns itself off. You arrive in the morning, you turn the oven on. The first message you will see is remove cartridge yeah. uh, with a picture. With a picture and as well, the yeah. oven, uh, the, you have to confirm that you remove the cartridge before the oven will even start. So, um, so while you're preparing your dough, I can probably jump in and show you yep. a bit about the difference of what an MKN oven is compared to the, the other Germans, um, yeah, the, other the other Germans. Germans. Uh, we only want to be comparable to the other two Germans. So um, we have a full range of six, 10, 20 trays, GN11, GN21. Uh, the main difference is that we've got a triple, uh, triple glazed door. So just with that, we can reduce the energy consumption by 28% compared to the others. So, and for the chef, main thing is that the other main German would have a vented door, just double glazed, that you need to open to clean. Here you see we've got three layers of glass. It's all sealed. There is no screw, nothing. Uh, you don't take the risk to break or don't have to clean. It's all sealed in one go. Um, our competitor do a lot of marketing and they've got to pay for the marketing cost and marketing team. That means that they work on um, um, value engineering their equipment. MKN doesn't. So we can lift the oven by the door. You can't do that by any other German manufacturer. You see here the 
stainless steel hinges. Um, the feet are stainless steel. It's all heavy duty and we don't do any compromise in terms of quality. Oh. One unique feature as well, 316 stainless steel in there, so medical grade, all the others are three or four. So if you work with seafood and aggressive product, we've got a better, um, a better stainless steel um, quality. So James told you about the, about the wave clean. Um, the additional feature that we're going to show you there is that's the that's the size of a GN tray. We can perfectly work on GN and compare to the other German again. You don't put it um, yeah. lengthwise, which can be difficult when you've got a lot of weight. We put it crosswise. But the advantage of that, and we can use the biggest cooking chamber in the market to use a special size called flexi rack. So that will include just you don't need to get any change into your oven. You can buy this from us. That gives you the capacity to increase um, your cooking by 50%. So you've got a customer having some budget issues or some power issues, you can tell him instead of going with a, an R10 tray, go with an MKN uh, 6 tray, buy some flexi rack and you've got exactly the same capacity. Or your customer is busy, he's got a big function, he's got a 10 tray for MKN, but he reckons it's going to be a bit short, he buys some flexi racks and he automatically increases capacity by 50% parts here takes up right the way the back of the whole area of the cavity of the oven, like you can see here. The other way, the other way. Sorry? Uh, yes, we are the only manufacturer that with a GN11, we can have the ladders for 60 by 40. Uh, all the other manufacturer would have to go for um, a GN21, so either 12 or 20 or, or 20 tray. We don't. So that's an additional feature. Um, I mentioned the triple glazing. I did some calculation yesterday with a, for a consultant in turn on a on a big project and checking the power of our oven compared to our German friend. Uh, on a 40 tray, and that's the same on the other sizes, we, 21, we need 21% less connected load than the other. So major um, energy saving there. Reason for that is the triple glazing, as well the fact that we have a heat exchanger. Um, again, that's, that's unique. So the heat exchanger is basically we, we use the condensate heat of copper pipe to preheat the water to 50 degrees before it goes into the oven. So instead of having a boiler that will need to be drained every couple of hours, again, water saving, um, and be reheated all the time, we use a PHI, so that's a solenoid valve that measures the water in real time to go into the oven. So we use a lot less water and a lot less energy than our competition. So that's massive. Uh, in terms of the way it uh, operates, so um, we've got manual cooking. So really it operates like, um, like an iPad, steaming, combi, convection. You choose one of your one of your functions. Uh, choose the temperature. Choose the time. It can be the time or core probe, and um, and you and you go from there and push start. Or you can use one of the 350 recipes that are already in Auto Chef, and you can select them, modify them, save them and have them in favorites. So 
350 recipes, most of the venues won't use that, but they will have a set menu. You can decide to, when you're on your standby menu, to have here and you just have your favorites that appear there and you can always change them. You've got a winter menu, a spring menu. You change your favorites and they will be the first one that arrive uh, in front of your screen. Okay, so another unique feature of the MKN is uh, smoke inside. So it can be built at the point of manufacture um, where you can add to those programs, like Jacques was saying, um, which is a meat one. And then at the last 20 minutes, so like the lamb we, we've done today, that could have been 15 hours. Before it went onto the hold, I could put um, 20 minutes of uh, smoke. It will introduce the smoke at the end of the cooking program or the beginning of the cooking program, uh, whenever you wanted to, as part of those steps of when you're doing um, smoking. So this is the little smoke box where you would load it with your chips, uh, are the, depending on the intensity of the smoking. Um, whether you soak them or not, you can soak them depending on what you're using, uh, sometimes apple juice and stuff like this, or spices in there. Tea can be mixed in with it um, for duck and things like that. Um, or they can go in dry. Obviously, if they're dry, it gives a more, um, I guess, less intense kind of flavor into it. And it's a bit of shorter smoking. Whereas if it's soaked, it's a longer um, flavor added to it. Most of uh, the other combi oven that you find on the market, you add a burner inside the cavity, which is not very healthy because you, will, you can have ash and all that inside your cavity. Here, the burning is made outside of the uh, cooking cavity, and then we just integrate smoke. Again, with that, you've got a full control of the duration of the smoking and the intensity of smoking, which is not the case when you get a burner inside. You have absolutely no control of the amount of smoke that you will get into, um, into your food. So that's as well something. It can't be retrofitted. You need to order it from, uh, from the factory, um, but that's then something that you get add on on your onion menu all the time. There you go. We've just got a few minutes left on, on the pressure cooking and then the big show happens. The lid comes up by itself and we'll uh, see my pie mix. Um, and then we're going to add it to, we're going to make a pot pie today. So it's going to add it to the pot and then Sorry. bake it with the pastry on yes. the top. Yes. Pastry I'm doing today is um, it's a half suet pastry and half butter, like short pastry. So I've just used some lard in there instead of butter, so half and half. Um, it makes it very good for this time of year, like a nice um, stick to your bones type of pastry. The oven will also come with like, this is a unique tray for, if you wanted to use your grill, even like even though it's a charcoal, put the grill marks onto your steaks or anything like that. You put one of these into there, under, and the steaks onto there, put the timer in there, whether it's medium, rare, or rare, whatever you want to cook it to. Um, when you take it out, these bars will obviously heat it up. You've got your cooking lines on there. You can turn them around so you can get the crisscross marks and so on. If you, don't, if you haven't got a uh, char grill or it's for function work where you're doing you know, big, large numbers of it. Again, more different type of grill marks. Probably more for putting it onto a fish as well as this, where it would you know, hold it in there rather than the gaps in between. So you can grill fish onto there. But chefs using the cast iron ones um, as well, that you know, doing them, doing naan breads on them, because you can cook them in there, get the real high temperatures on there and turn them over. Now, what I would do is I put it into the oven there and then put it onto, well, in the preheating process, before you put the steaks in, they do is preheating process. It'll take it to around That's about 260 degrees. So really heat it up in there. And then the next step in the cooking cycle Two zones. will be basically, says so open the door and put your steaks yes. on there. You put them all in there how you want them. You can you can adjust that as well so that if you wanted uh, yeah, to take them out, put it on both um, sides if you wanted to, or you want to take it out and do the uh, crisscross the, pattern. The advantage of the V12 open it in between, turn the steaks around. 
a big and work like a back in again. Yeah, yeah, so, so and then if you're using the probe, the pan, if it's a quite a thick, like a ribeye, so. you know, this, you're going to get nice, perfect temperature in the middle. Um, and I'll show you some of yeah. these. So, um, so fillet steak, rare for instance, you'll see how the cooking program works. So it starts it off um, for five minutes on 240 degrees. Whereas if that tray's already in there, that's really heating it up, getting the in max, like a, like a char grill would. It's really heating up that those bars. And then you're putting it in um, at a temperature, so the probe's going in 85 degrees and then for four minutes. And then 54 degrees Celsius for the actual, for the inside. Um, by the probe, yeah, which sits here in the front. So it sits in their housing there on the front there. Yeah. How long do we have uh, left, friends? Two minutes? Two minutes, yeah. 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 I, can, I can probably show you uh, while we are at the combi, the, the space combi. So you've seen the big brother there, the yes. flexi combi. Uh, what MKN has developed as well is what they call the space combi. The reason why it's called uh, Magic Team, it has a self-integration, integrated hood oh, it's on low. inside, fully yeah. according to the Australian it's standard 1668.2. So yeah. you can have it with or without. The advantage of this one, again, unique feature, you can basically install it anywhere you don't need a hood. Three layers of, four layers of filter, carbon filter, foam and air filter that will get the grease, the fat, the blue smoke, the odors kept into that. And this hood will be cleaned by the cartridge that you just saw. So again, we have installed that in hotel lobbies, uh, convenience stores when they want to cook, they don't have the hood or you don't have the space in your kitchen, you can have a 12 tray, you don't need a hood. Individually as well, we one of the best sellers of the MKN Combi that we sell uh, is an individual oven with a self condensation hood integrated that can be installed on the bench. Also, we have some domestic wealthy customers that have installed that into their into their own kitchen as well. And knife. That's an oven that is used by chef. It's not a domestic IN. It's a real commercial commercial oven. So same feature as uh, yeah, as probably, the, the big the big one. Bit, I probably so in the meantime I think the Flexi Chef has finished cooking so we can show you the the pie filling. So James, where are we now? It's opened. The pressure was just released while Jack was talking. Um, Sorry. <laughs> and uh, I'm just gonna reduce it a, bit, a little bit in a moment. I just wanted to put some a little bit out of it just so you could see the tenderness of the beef if you have anybody wants to try and how it's, that was 26 minutes. Please. On beef. Come on, Josh, be up to your reputation. There you go. Now all I'm going to do is um, just a, a little last little stage of basically just reducing it, just to thicken up that stock and sauce. This is a point where you could use a thickener, um, get it to the consistency you wanted to, and just let it boil. Um, I used flour. I probably could have used a little bit more flour and made it a little bit thicker. Um, it's always going to work this way with the guys, the pie makers coming in. <laughs> but um. But Sorry. even there with the it's preheating it's doing there, it's still Sorry, thickening it a little bit. Housekeeping, just there. But so in your, I don't want you to divulge any secret, but if you if you do a, a pie mix like that, how long would you cook the meat? To twice that. Twice that. Twice You can see how fast it comes up with the grilling as well, rather than uh, the boiling or the soft cooking. It, it hasn't even finished its preheating yet to get to the 160 that I said it at. Um, and we're already getting a, a good reduction of that sauce. So by the time it's finished the preheating and it come up to temperature for a few minutes, um, this most of it will be uh, 
absolutely heated. That's part kind of the reason why I did a pot pie today, so I can just put it on there. Hopefully it cool down a little bit so I can put the top on and we can get a decent result. I'm not making my excuses before my, my, my pie. Obviously a very um, yeah, yeah. great little yeah. trolley. Um, handles can come off, so we sort of straight into the fridges. Have your gas trays into here. Another great little feature of the, this is that it has, it has a, a portioning function where you can set it as, um, I'm not sure how many litres this is, but um, if you wanted five litres per gastro of, of your mix, um, the pan will rise to the, to the point, distribute that where you set it at, and then go back slightly, allowing you to take the one gastro away, put it into a hot box or wherever you're storing it, put the next one in, press again, start again, it will come up and do the exactly the same portion control. So you're not standing there trying to judge it with, with the pan and everything else, it takes all that guesswork out of it. And you can decide, um, you can tell the machine, I want 20 liters, or you can say, I've got a GN11 200 deep, and push your green button. It will pour exactly what you asked for and stop. This is one of my favorite ones, is um, I spent many years with a brat pan, and then you're holding the spider on the front trying to hold the bones back while you're trying to strain your stock. So you can make a stock. This sits on there uniquely. Lift the pan up, you strain all your nice stock up, keeping all the bones and all the waste product into there. And then you just get rid of it afterwards. Very simple tool, but it's awesome. in a chef size, as I said. The other one, this is basically the holding bar for baskets. If you want to do blanching vegetables, the things that fix onto the bottom. I won't put it in now just because of the issues in there. Um, fits it onto these two parts of the back here. And then we have the baskets that sit on there. Um, you can have it boiling water in there, controlling the temperature of the water, blanching your vegetables or whatever else it is. You can deep fry in this as well. Um, it's got a feature on there, but um, not really something I would recommend because you put in the oil down the drain and Stuff like that, it's, yeah. But when it was quite wet before, um, it's pretty much reduced all that down and become just a similar. I like the inclined as well. I like the inclined because you can see what Yes, but. Yeah. How's the look? Not too bad. <laughs> So what we'll do now, we're going to put it on for its space clean. Go until you get the plate. Yep. If you know that... It's going to have a little exactly. bit of the... Exactly. It's got some of the so reducing. If you know your creme brulee needs um, 20 seconds. So you can have it on automate on normal as well. Two sides. So this is one of the things that this the is the cleaning lamps for the self cleaning hot plate. part of it. So, just so you get a so sits in its own little housing underneath here, this um, lot, where you got the lance you arm um, and a little uh, spanner that basically goes onto this. So, this is part on here, it's got like a little sliding mechanism. Slide it on four sides. On, the, on the arm, you've got the uh, open lock, closed lock. <laughs> so you just place it under the closed uh, lock. It's 4.8 kilowatts, three phase. So and if you turn know, it simply uh, at the point. Uh, we can do it there, it's closed. Phase. And then bring up, um, I'll do it again. So on here, it's called space clean. This one, the little button. Uh, is the pan in working position? It's just asking you a few checkpoints. Make sure the pan is all completely down. Yeah, no, it's so okay. It's a great pan. Um, and then you get again, great similar pan. to what we were doing over here with the, with the uh, wave clean. Um, you get to choose two minutes, five minutes, and intensive, which is 80 minutes. Um, that, the 80 minutes is obviously something that you probably do at the end of the day, just to make sure it's really clean and then walk out of the kitchen and leave it. It'll, come up when it's finished there. So we would start it on the five minutes. There you go. Oh, there you go. Uh, I, I just was... need it to be there. Yeah. To just just to like to like your presence. Uh, 
you'll hear it. Straight away. So inside of there, that arm, uh, the end part of it is basically turning around and high pressure water is running all the way around the pan. Um, I don't know the exact PSI. Do you, know, do you know the PSI? The... Uh, it's 350 kilometers an hour, well. uh, hot water um, at 360 degrees. So, yeah. You want to preheat the oven? Ah, yes. What? Uh, oh, I'm going to into a design and I'll just get... But we're um, obviously for timing. Yeah. So there you go. All of that burnt on stuff is gone. And there's no that's no chemicals, that's just so high no chemicals? Water. Probably six. It even gets up to the point of basically your like seals. Yeah, yeah. Um, gets into up to here so it slushes out the seals. These can also be removed and then reinserted. Basically, every maybe few months, you might want to take them out, just soak them in uh, some hot soapy water. There you go. So, if you compare uh, the time you spend on cleaning, uh, the chemical cost, um, that's that's as well added value. So we basically, if you. Uh, if you compare what a, what a flexi chef would do, uh, if you're on a normal brat pan, say a beef stew, 90 minutes, this one would do it in, in 40. Uh, you Look at that. do your first batch, you clean, you do your second batch, you're finished with your current brat pan, you still haven't finished your first batch. So you double your volume straight away. Yes. But the new generation that arrives at the end of the year, you won't have that. You won't even have the arm. You've got the cleaning mechanism inside the lid permanently. Yeah. You basically don't have to do anything. You push a button and off it goes. Like a little globe sits here, um, built into it and it just it does the same job, but it's yeah, built in rather than having to pick up the arm. Because, yes, a lot of people were either lo losing the arm or losing the small bit and things like that. So now it's set up inside the lead. Um, you can't lose it. Uh, uh, to answer your question before, the, uh, the water supply um, is controllable by here. It's just a step. No you can problem. control the temperature. Nice. You've got the cooking. So, uh, hose, so hosing it down for manual cleaning. If you wanted to, um, USB ports for uh, uploading uh, photographs or info. Another feature on the, on the Flexi Chef um, is what we call Flexi Zone. Um, and that's uh, the precision of the, the temperature. So that can, you can use that when you're not using wet dishes. Um, you want to you use uh, the Flexi Chef as a, as a grill. You can, you've got a small quantity, you've got your Flexi Chef there. You can just heat up half of it, a third of it. Uh, you can have just the, the side and then, and then mix the dishes and with a very precise temperature setting. So we're gonna show you that on some, uh, uh, some um, pancakes, I think it is. Yep. Um, so when we will put different temperature on the surface and show you the accuracy of the temperature and that's also, as well something very important in when you do pressure cooking you need to make sure that you cook at the right temperature so as you can see here i've selected the two zones you um, can what i'm going to go do further some, if you want to some buttermilk pancakes um, giving you to where you can set the temperature for each zone. So there's zone one, zone two. So we'll start over to here. Um, I'll set this one. Pancakes doesn't need to be that high. Maybe 180. And then pancakes is really good to demonstrate. And then we'll go non-stop. And then the other side, 
Whereas if we can seal the pancake, get the correct color on both sides, and then move it over to let it finish cooking in the middle onto, onto this side. Um, it's gonna be used, I guess, in the, even on the cooking line in the kitchen for sealing meats, whether beef medallions or steaks, so there's chicken cool. breasts, cooking them and sealing them on one side, moving them over, letting them cook slowly on that side, and never the need to actually move into an oven or anything else. Can be for smaller items, can be straight from there, resting onto the plate. Yes. So, so, so we're cooking this side. Yes. Well, it'll it'll preheat, so it's thing. Sturdier, it's um, more solid. Make that non stop. Um, and it's okay. faster to cure. Um, so we'll start when it. You're doing you exactly can see them on there, business. flip them over, get the both nice color, yeah. even color on both sides, yeah. and move them yeah. over. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. To keep them yeah. there. Yeah. So. Massive difference. Uh, compared to that, it's a uh, yeah. You get that. You get that theatre, but not really the. What it does compared to. Moment of truth. Yes. Could look a bit prettier. Um, next time I'll get a pie, a pie dish. Guys, some pie. sing my own praises too much, but the actual pastry is quite nice. Anybody want to try? Yeah, go. probably a good observation. It is going to be very hot at the moment. But, um, didn't come out too bad. The pastry is nice. Um, colour and presentation going to be a little bit better. But, um, so 26 minutes cooking? 26 minutes cooking. Under pressure, yeah. 